Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today we're talking to a repeat guest. I love talking to repeat guests because it means that they have so much great knowledge to share with us that we couldn't get it in an hour. It also means that they're doing new things like writing a new book. And we're going to be talking about that with my guest. So please join me in welcoming Nikki Green to our program today. Welcome, Nikki. How the heck are you doing? Doing fantastic. Glad to be here. Perfect. I love it. You know, and in this day and age of post-COVID whatevers, Nikki and I actually saw each other in person a week ago. Oh my gosh, what a concept. We went to PodFest um, and and had a great time there. It really was fun to see people in person again. And PodFest was was absolutely fantastic. So let me tell people a little bit about you, Nikki, and then we will dive into this. Sounds good. So Nikki Green is a life and business resiliency expert who has worked in the international business industry for more than 20 years. Empowering young people to reach their full potential is her greatest passion. And as an aspiring, or not aspiring, inspiring keynote speaker, Nikki will motivate your organization and event attendees. Nikki has worked with several notable C-level executives in top Silicon Valley companies. A four-time published author, she received double promotions in two different Fortune 500 companies and the Golden Microphone Award. Nikki's most recent book, as I said, is called Chameleon Mindset. So again, Nikki, welcome. Oh, thank you. It was so wonderful seeing you in person and such a surprise. I didn't even know you were going to be there. And I turned the corner. There you were. There we were. (laughs) Such fun, such fun. Well, part of the reason you were there and the reason why we really absolutely had to do this was your new book. And you had said that it was your goal because it is a brand new book. Um, and it was your goal to go on a hundred podcasts. So, you know, as we film this and, and record it, it might not go out for a little bit, but how are you doing on your goal? Well, it was a pretty lofty goal and one I didn't even think about. So a friend of mine in December was saying, oh, that was kind of her goal as she was finishing out the year. She wanted to get a hundred more podcasts in. And I was like, at first, wait, wait, you can, that's a lot, that right. feels like a lot of podcasts. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, I, I could do that. You mm-hmm. know, all of a sudden the goal comes from like impossible right. to attainable. Mm-hmm. And with the new book coming out, I said, mm-hmm. oh man, this would be perfect. It was right. one thing that when I launched my first book and we talked mm-hmm. last time, I, I always said my gap was marketing. I didn't mm-hmm. really, I could do the creative process and, mm-hmm. and build a great book. What I couldn't do is figure out how to market. And now that mm-hmm. I've been podcasting for a while and I have a great network, mm-hmm. I said, Shh, this is a slam dunk. Let's get right. it done. Mm-hmm. And so by the time I got to pod fest, mm-hmm. um, a few weeks ago, I had 50 already in the, in the docket cool. <laughs> and then 25 more on the calendar. So we just have 25 left to go and they're nice. getting scheduled as we Perfect. speak. So we're going to hit that magic 100. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, and part of the reason I wanted to, to talk about that a little bit is to show people it is doable. Now a hundred might really be, you know, something, something that somebody is going, no, nah, not really. But, you know, if you are promoting your business and you're doing it by podcast, one a week is not a scary number. So that's four or five a month. Um, And, you know, and and so that's 52 programs for the entire year. So just kind of think about that, folks. That's not a a scary thing to do. Um, You know, and and, uh, if Nikki can do 100, we can do 52 in a year, right? (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Well, and the beauty of having my own podcast as well is I can do swaps with people now. So right. now I have a better system to collaborate mm-hmm. and trade, or maybe if mm-hmm. they're launching other products and services that they need assistance with, mm-hmm. you know, I can share my network. So I've been really working. And that was a great part of mm-hmm. PodFest is more of that networking opportunity mm-hmm. to spend time actually talking to the people right. that do podcasts, mm-hmm. see what helps them in their business mm-hmm. and what you need and make some sort of swap that works mm-hmm. for both people and right. everybody's happy. Right, right. I love it. I love it. 
Well, for those who didn't listen the last time you were on, uh, tell us a little bit about how it is that you got to where you are today, because you have had a great career. Um, I mentioned, you know, you've been doing this for 20 years. You started when you were four, we know. Um, but, you know, tell us a little bit how it is that you got to where you are today. Yeah. And in my first book, I talk a little bit about my journey. I kind of hit those big life milestones that I often coach people through, which is uh, I started with six parents. So when I talk about we've all had six parents, right? Mm -hmm. It's everybody's story. But I found that actually people had parallels to it. Maybe Mm -hmm. they were adopted. Maybe they didn't know their parents. Mm -hmm. Um, And so although that part, like that specific part might be Mm -hmm. different, some people still found these parallels to their Mm -hmm. life. And what it made is me resilient to change. Right. And so because I was constantly mm-hmm. moving between schools, mm-hmm. moving between houses and moving between states, even mm-hmm. that made me just have this different attitude when mm-hmm. it came to trying to tackle new challenges, right. sort of like the podcast thing. Mm-hmm. And despite, you know, all this adversity of never quite going to the same school mm-hmm. for more than uh, a year or two, I decided I was going to go work in Silicon Valley Mm. and I tried to do it the hard way. I tried to get myself in without referrals, without recommendations, Mm -hmm. because I didn't have good guidance when I was graduating college. Mm -hmm. Most people I knew weren't in tech. Mm -hmm. And so I got there and then I swear one day I'm sitting at lunch and I see one of my professors walk by (laughs) and And you're like, wait a minute. He's like, oh, I consult here all the time. Why Mm -hmm. didn't you tell me Mm -hmm. you were trying to get jobs here? Mm -hmm. So these are the things I talk about in the first book about my journeys and how Mm -hmm. important it is to really leverage the network because you just don't know what other experiences Mm -hmm. people have out of where you see them. Um, I talk about the fact that my parents were, one set of my parents were barbers and they had a Mm -hmm. barbershop for 20 years. There are these key connectors in Mm -hmm. society that, you know, they talk to everybody of all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so if you need help with something, your barber, your, you know, hairdresser, Mm -hmm. right. Maybe the very person Mm -hmm. that can connect you Mm -hmm. with someone you need. Um, And so it was a really great journey through my time in Silicon Valley. There was the ups and downs, obviously difficult hours Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, traveling a lot, which was, you know, fun, but also challenging physically, Mm -hmm. you know, and difficult on my personal relationships. Mm -hmm. So I talk about all those things of how I balance that throughout the mm-hmm. years. Um, but I talk about the good things that happened and mm-hmm. why that resilience helped me adapt to those right. changes, mm-hmm. be able to tackle bigger and bigger projects at work. And like it says in my bio, get promoted more than not just mm-hmm. once, but twice in the same rotation, mm-hmm. which is usually an unheard of thing. Right. So, <laughs> and, and especially for women, we'll just kind of put that out there. It is, it yeah. is tech. I mean, you know, tech is still one of those areas where, you know, it, in many ways is still very male dominated. Absolutely. And and I talk about that. I talk about oftentimes being in a room full of not only people that were older than me, mm-hmm. but people that were all men and, mm-hmm. and I was the only woman mm-hmm. and, and how like the atmosphere changed, how working with them changed mm-hmm. and just trying to see that Dr. and Jekyll of Mr. Hyde mm-hmm. that I saw a lot of times that they were a very mm-hmm. different person in that closed room right. than they presented to the rest of the mm-hmm. company. So. Right, right. You know, so you decided to, you've, you've done several things since we've, we've chatted last. Um, you know, I loved when I went to your website, which is the Nikki green.com. Um, and you, and I, I mentioned it in your bio too, your focus now is on working with those kids coming right out of college, you know, and, and really, as you, as you put it on your website, you work with compelling future leaders to find strength in their uniqueness. And I love that because uh, to be honest, I mean, out of my thousands of contacts, I don't think I know a single person who's not say a career coach who is helping our kids coming out of college with what the heck are they going to do next? And so tell us why you decided that this, and, and, you know, this is, this is great. I love this. So tell us why you decided to focus on this. Yeah. uh, For me, I loved all of the incredible minds that were coming out of Mm -hmm. university that I got the privilege to work with in Mm -hmm. Silicon Valley. Just incredibly amazing. They came from universities top Mm -hmm. all over the world. 
but they couldn't find conference rooms or like go get a cup of coffee. There was really key like adulting Mm -hmm. things that they were Mm -hmm. missing because their whole training had been focused on those hard skills, those technical skills. Mm -hmm. But as I learned in my career, those only lasted me probably the first four to five Mm -hmm. years of my career. After that, I was a manager, you know, I was a manager at 26 Mm -hmm. and, and up the chain. And so not having those more like grounded soft skills, Mm -hmm. a lot of them are struggling. Mm -hmm. And so I really love helping this generation and they have so many inspiring ideas, but they have a real big fear and anxiety, especially Mm -hmm. coming out of COVID and having been locked Mm -hmm. down during kind of a critical Mm -hmm. critical socialization period in their life that now uh, it's really helping them get back out in the world, Mm -hmm. reconnect and build a network Mm -hmm. and make sure they're on the path they're supposed to be on. Many of them, like many of us did the, I shoulds, like Mm -hmm. I should go to this school. I should, I should get this degree. degree. I should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. We should all over ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. It's very exhausting because you feel like, okay, well, if I do it, I'm on the right path because this is what I've been told. Mm -hmm. And So many of them get there and they're disillusioned and Mm -hmm. they're disappointed and even, you know, to the extent of being depressed and and really upset. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, they end up back at home or, you know, living in the basement and Mm -hmm. all the parents are also calling me going, help me (laughs) make them go away. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, I know a lot of people want to work with like C-level people and Mm -hmm. higher level executives and help them, you know, find their inner child or whatever. I like just actually Mm -hmm. working with young people Mm -hmm. that are trying to mature and will be this future Mm -hmm. leaders of our society. Um, Gen Z is bigger than millennial and Gen X Mm -hmm. put together. It is a huge population. Mm -hmm. And so making sure that they have a good footing is great Mm -hmm. for us, not just in business, but in politics, Mm -hmm. running our economy, right? Right. So many areas where they have an interest. And they'll be in charge when we're still around, you know, so we want to make sure that they're taking care of, of things for us. Yeah, exactly. My generation and Gen X, all of us are also, we've done a good job of taking care Mm -hmm. of ourselves and planning for Mm -hmm. retirement. And I think most of us are actually going to exit the workforce Mm -hmm. quickly. We may still work. We're Mm going to, you know, be on boards or associations Mm -hmm. or give back in different ways, but I don't think we're going to keep doing these corporate jobs Mm -hmm. as long as, you know, say our parents did. Right. You know, and it it always kind of surprises us when these youngsters are so articulate and and skilled and knowledgeable. Um, you know, I went to the University of Colorado, go Buffs. Um, and oh, it was it was you know the middle of last year. I got a text from the athletic department out there. Now my first thought was, uh, what? <laughs> now we are season ticket holders, but it had nothing to do with that. And 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 it was saying that this young man. Um, had recently graduated. He was a football player. So that was why the athletic department was contacting me, but he lived here in Atlanta. And would I be willing to, to reach out to him? And of course I said, yes. I mean, that was just you know a no brainer before I could reach out to him. He reached out to me. So that was, you know, m- mega, mega good point right there. And, you know, he, now he benefited from COVID in the fact that he was able to go to, especially being an athlete, he went for six years. Um, and so he has an undergrad degree from the University of Colorado, and then he has a master's degree from Tulane. And so he played football yes. all six years, but got those two degrees. And, you know, and so he's back here in Atlanta and, and, you know, he sends me this text message and he said, I am building my network. And I went, ding, 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 ding. You know, and so of course I was going to reach out to this young man. And he is, he is just incredible. We've actually had him on the program because it was so fun to talk to him about what he, um, you know, the steps that he was taking and, and he knows, you know, and, and you you talk about kids that, that don't know what they're doing. I mean, when he graduated from college, he had every intention that he was going to play professional football. Didn't happen. Hasn't yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's still got a couple years where maybe he could, you never know, but it, you know, and, and he's, he is a very good player, but what happened was he's a safety and there were just a lot of safeties that turned pro that year. So, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there's a limit. Um, and, and unfortunately it's a pretty small limit. I mean, it's not like you're hiring for a major industry when you're talking a professional sports team, you know, there's, there's not a lot of places. And, and he said, you know, so he went from thinking he was doing this one thing to, uh oh, now what am I going to do? And what was so impressive about him was there was no downtime. 
you know, he, he did not sit around and, you know, on his parents' couch, it was immediately, what can I do? And Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's happening more and more with that generation is they are realizing they don't want to sit in their parents' basement. Financially, they might have to, but, you know, they're going to get out of there as soon as possible. And so I'm guessing that, you know, when you work with these kids, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Amazing. And, you know, the whole nature of work is changing. Mm -hmm. And before we built things, you had to kind of have a physical skill and you went into a factory or, you know, maybe you had a little bit of a desk job, but depending on what it was, it was still kind of clock in, clock Mm -hmm. out. And and that's what you do. Now, since the 90s, since the emergence of technology and the internet, we are in a knowledge-based economy. Mm -hmm. Everything is based on what we do with our mind. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that is you take it all with you. So no, no matter matter if you're building your own business or you're going to go work for someone else, you're constantly building on those skills. And what most people realize too, is no one's staying in jobs for very long Mm -hmm. and that's okay. It's okay to go get a little bit of experience Mm -hmm. and then realize maybe it's not quite the right Mm -hmm. fit or go tackle Mm -hmm. something as soon as a new Mm -hmm. great opportunity comes for you and, and know that you can take along your 401k and that you're still going to get medical benefits Mm -hmm. and those kind of other security package things that go along with the compensation package. So I just love everyone just starting to really embrace and take Mm -hmm. control of their career Mm -hmm. in a totally different way than I think we've ever done before. Right. You know, and companies have gotten used to the fact that they, you know, if they have an employee for a couple of years, they're probably doing pretty good. Um, You know, and, and obviously it depends on what it is, but, but yeah, you know, it's the, they're, there are those that are long-termers, but in so many cases, no, you know, they're, they're there for a couple of years. They either change internally or externally because they're continuing on that skill set. Um, you know, and, and that really is what they're doing. It's not, Ooh, I don't like this. It's what is next. Yeah, exactly. Well, and because they have so much uh, access to information now, mm-hmm. once they get that courage to keep pushing towards mm-hmm. new things, they can build their own new path. I mm-hmm. built my own job sometimes mm-hmm. because I would see things that weren't working properly right. or, you know, a system that needed to be improved. And I would go make an, a proposal to the mm-hmm. VPs and, you know, they would fund it and I would have a job mm-hmm. and, you know, a, you know, network mm-hmm. team. And, and it was fantastic. It gave me so much more empowerment to be like, I'm not just going to take what you're giving me. I'm going to add on what I see can mm-hmm. make it better. And I'm not just making it better for me. I'm mm-hmm. making it better for the whole company and the employees or customers that it touches. So, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mentioned when I was talking about your website that you're helping them find their uniqueness. And I think that is a big shift also, you know, because it used to be that, you know, I mean, you just look at how many college degrees there are. You know, it's like, holy schmoly, I don't even know what a lot of these things are, right? My degree, my undergrad degree was in social sciences, right? Um, (laughs) It meant I didn't have to take a lot of math. That really was kind of my whole goal. But, um, you know, we we came out of college, you know, the the baby boomers and the millennials and, you know, with these, you know, kind of cookie cutter type of, of things. Now, it did start to really change after the baby boomers, but... You know, it was, it really was geared toward you were going to go work in corporate America. There would be 5,000 of you doing the same thing. And, and heaven forbid that you would raise your hand and go, yeah, but what if we, uh, right. you know, and, and, and as you said, now we're really t- looking at what unique talents, skills, and knowledge do people have? And it could be that, you know, they're my age and they have that stuff too, but it, it, it's the the businesses and entrepreneurs are really figuring out that is where we're going to excel. Yeah. And speaking of that, it's it's funny because I've actually had a lot of, um, you know, teachers that want to leave mm-hmm. where they're at or, you know, parents that are now empty nesters mm-hmm. and they are, you know, comfortable enough to be able to retire, mm-hmm. but still want to work. Right. Uh, people that are in these transition spots are coming to me as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy to help them because mm-hmm. this is exactly it. Mm-hmm. There are so many variations in our skill sets mm-hmm. and our experiences that are building this new future. You know, if you think about it, if you just do an engineering path, Path, some of the best engineers weren't the ones that were great at you know technical programming. Mm-hmm. They were ones that were interested in filmmaking right. and played musical mm-hmm. instruments. 
because those things are math too. And, mm-hmm. and they're just a creative element and way mm-hmm. of, of expressing it. And so that's why I always encourage people that you need to harness all these unique mm-hmm. talents that you have, because they are going to layer and mm-hmm. influence your ability to adapt and create new ways forward. Right, right. You know, and, and things are ever changing. You know, as, as we are recording this, the Grammys were just a couple of nights ago and they had a new category. Now, I didn't watch the Grammys. I just read about this on the news because I thought this was very cool. One of the, the new category was for a soundtrack for a video game. Oh, cool. <laughs> and, you know, and, and of course, my first thought was do, 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 right. You know, which, you know, one of the little packing anything thing is, you know, all that. And, um, and I guess I was watching this on TV because I had to be, they were playing examples and the, the music was, it was just like music that you would have for a movie or especially a, a feature length movie, because of course, you know, some of these video games go on forever. And yeah, I mean, that was a totally new category that they were giving a Grammy for. And the music was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm thinking, you know, 20 years ago, if we had said, I'm going to write musical scores for video games, people would have gone, do, 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 right? And now it's orchestras and, and choral parts and all sorts of things. Yeah. Well, it's such a different way of how younger people consume media as mm-hmm. well. You know, aside from social media, obviously everyone's mm-hmm. kind of over there, but more young people are gaming than watching mm-hmm. any single right. streaming service mm-hmm. because now there are these long cut shots, which are mm-hmm. movie like in quality, mm-hmm. you know, and they are learning key problem solving skills mm-hmm. while they're at it. Right. In my new book, Chameleon Mindset, I actually make this reference and I, mm-hmm. I got this um, from a wonderful TED talk that I, I reference in there. But it's about the difference between schools mm-hmm. and gamification. Mm-hmm. When you go to school, you get 100%. And then every time you do something wrong, minus, 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 right. minus, minus, mm-hmm. and you're not good. In a game, you start at zero oh. and you have the ability to build yourself right. up. And Everything you do, even if you fall off a cliff, Mm -hmm. you get to get yourself back up. Right, right. Yeah, you dust your little virtual self off and away you go again. And you go off again. And it's so much more like life and like work. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that these kids are actually playing Mm -hmm. these skills games because then they realize, okay, I start with nothing, but then I start to look Mm -hmm. around and I find the tools I need and I find a map and, you Mm -hmm. know, you find all of the things that Mm -hmm. help you get to each level. Mm -hmm. And you're not afraid to fail, to die because Mm -hmm. you get to come back. Unlike your life. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Poof. Um, You know, and and it's it's interesting because like we said, the games have evolved, you know, they figured mm-hmm. out that, you know, long gone are the times where people just sat and mindlessly played whatever, you know, they really did m- need to make them kind of an educational tool, as you were saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, you know, when my brother or my boyfriend, you know, when they play video games, they're playing together. It, mm-hmm. They're no longer, you know, despite distance of where people live, right. you can get online and connect mm-hmm. with people. And then my nephews watch other people play video games mm-hmm. on YouTube. The thing my brother always tried to make me mm-hmm. do when I was younger, they do completely for free. So they're already without even playing mm-hmm. the game learning how to beat the game and right. they're they're open to being mm-hmm. educated about something that's interesting to mm-hmm. them so it's it's really fascinating i think how gaming is changing so many aspects right. of our lives right. <laughs> yeah you know and and of course you know us older people have to be shown the the benefits of it otherwise we think well they're just sitting there wasting their life no you know and <laughs> like with anything yes you know there are extremes and you know and, and there are, are issues but you know, yeah, it's, it's amazing to think, wow, you know, they're, they're learning problem solving skills, they're networking, you know, they're Mm -hmm. learning in, in whatever, you know, some of the games you're building a team. I mean, you know, all sorts of things. Yeah. And even the games for the little kids now, Mm -hmm. you know, they've got, you know, not just the usual Mario Kart, which is always fun, Mm -hmm. but you know, they've got Minecraft and some of the ones like when I was at Microsoft learning how it really teaches them STEM skills Mm -hmm. and, you know, other types of engineering. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot happening kind of beneath the scenes that, you know, I'm just amazed and and really Mm -hmm. proud that that's how some of our technology Mm -hmm. is evolving rather than some of the sort of waste Mm -hmm. of time things that are also getting (laughs) built. Well, and like we said, they are putting in it those educational aspects. Um, Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, it's, it's, it is just interesting that that is, is how things have evolved, which it kind of makes sense that they should. 
Yeah. Well, and I really wish, you know, I talk about on my podcast too, you know, we kind of get so tied into social media and all these Mm -hmm. things. And that is another kind of big time suck and the abuse of the algorithms. Mm -hmm. And as you know, potentially some changes of the guard are happening in these Mm -hmm. social media companies. It's interesting to see if they will start to harness a more positive mindset Mm -hmm. and more educational content, Mm -hmm. because I think that's where YouTube is far surpassing some of these other channels. Mm -hmm. One, because it has just better search in, in general, but mm-hmm. well, it has, you know, it, it is owned by that big guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they, they have more educational content, whereas mm-hmm. everything else is a little bit more geared toward what's the latest trending, viral, mm-hmm. ridiculous, whatever. Mm-hmm. And yes, I do some of the dances, so I'm not totally judging. <laughs> I'm not but, on TikTok, so yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But just the difference of, I just really would like to see that become a little bit more focused Mm -hmm. on at the very least more positive mindset and, you know, positive things in our world, you know, rather than quite so much just the sensational, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of Hollywood glamour type things. So, well, and going down the wrong path. I mean, you know, we're, we're always seeing things where, and, and it is especially TikTok where they are saying that, you know, the new viral, whatever is actually dangerous, um, Mm -hmm. you know, or harmful and, and all of those things. And, and it probably didn't set out that way. I mean, you know, whoever did it the first time, you know, now granted, you know, we, we do dangerous things for fun, but you know, they didn't set out to say, Hey, let's see if we can hurt people. Um, it was just one of those things where they didn't think it through and they went, Oh, hmm, (laughs) well, that might not be a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, and it's about social responsibility. And this kind of goes back to some of my early messages Mm -hmm. about, you know, working in the corporate environment is it it really wasn't safe for me as a woman many Mm -hmm. times, psychologically, Mm -hmm. physically, you know, emotionally. Mm -hmm. And this is where I continue to caution us as we talk about getting back into the workforce. Mm -hmm. Um, But I worry about those same things with social media. Um, I was on another podcast and we were talking about, you know, sort of trolls or people commenting Mm -hmm. on social media about Mm -hmm. things. And they were like, oh, well, you know, as long as it's commentary about our topic, good or bad, it doesn't matter. I said, yeah, but that's the type of comments you get. That's not the type of comments I get. Yeah. The type of comments I get and other women get, they're much more derogatory. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to do with the topic Mm -hmm. at hand. And there isn't a place really keeping us safe Mm -hmm. psychologically, you know, Mm -hmm. on on the internet. So I think those things are improvements I'd love to see Mm -hmm. on that side too. And again, just getting in a more positive Mm -hmm. way for people using the technology. Right. You know, and- (laughs) And it doesn't help in many cases to report it, you know, because we, we get those. Now I try, now my profile is pretty open on Facebook, you know, and, and, but the, the trolls, and it's really funny. They always think, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to wear a military uniform. Like uh, no, I mean, you know, and, and first of all, it's probably not their picture. I mean, you know, they found, you know, they found somebody else's picture. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and I get, you know, probably two of these a week where it's the high you're pretty. I really like what you have to say. And so they're, they're complimenting, but if somebody walked up to you in person and said that you would think your pots go away, <laughs> um, you know, and, and so I report those to Facebook and never do they come back as being a problem? They they do not violate our community standards. Well, yeah, because those people know what they're doing. But the problem is they are violating community standards. Now, can I block them? Yes, and I do. Um, but the, the issue is that I can block them, but it just means they go to the next person. And that person then might have an issue. They might, you know, um, there was one the other day where it was a, a gentleman Mm -hmm. who finally had to admit to his son that he had given his entire life savings to a woman he met online. And, you know, and it was one of those dribby drabby things where, you know, Hey, you need 500. And then pretty soon it was, you know, I need to buy a house or something like that. And of course she was not, she might not have even been a a scan. Um, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and, and so, you know, we need to stop those people before it gets that far. And, and so that's where the, the platforms, whatever it is, and, and we get them on LinkedIn too, right? I'm like, really? You're going to say, <laughs> hi, you're pretty on LinkedIn. And I always want to respond and say, do you know how old I am? You know, and, uh, <laughs> you know I'm like, you know, no. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's just, we, we need to stop that because it is an issue, um, you know, and, and, and it's just, yeah, it, it causes problems because they might not get us, but they're going to get somebody else. 
Well, and younger and younger people are online. And I know mm-hmm. that's part of the debate. And, mm-hmm. you know, I say exactly the same thing. If that person came up to you or came up mm-hmm. to your front door and said right. those things, mm-hmm. would you be comfortable? You don't know them. No. They're a stranger mm-hmm. and it's not appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, I mean, half of them are bots and fake. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we were on a LinkedIn class just yesterday talking mm-hmm. about some of this and they were saying they're looking for close- a live body, right? You know, they want yeah, somebody to least, respond and then, then it might go further. Then, mm-hmm. then they're trying to get money or whatever mm-hmm. the silly things are. So <laughs> I I just, you know, this is all part of kind of my coaching and training is Mm -hmm. really making sure people are spending their time towards the goals that they need to Mm -hmm. achieve. And if these tools are not making that happen, then it's time Mm -hmm. to take a break. And Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people taking breaks from social media, Mm -hmm. which is fantastic. I think even if it's just, you know, a weekend or, Mm -hmm. you know, a day or two, just getting that break and Mm -hmm. not being so kind of glued to it, I think is really important, no Mm -hmm. matter what it is, the gaming or, Mm -hmm. you know, any of the other things or just streaming services in general, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and knowing (coughs) that, excuse me, that what you put out there is out there, Mm -hmm. you know, people are like, well, but I have my privacy filters and, or I deleted that, but no, you know, once it's out there, it's out there. People can, they could have taken screenshots. You know, I remember one time I was working with a young woman who was having trouble getting into a job and I looked at her LinkedIn profile and it was perfect. I mean, she, she knew what she was doing on LinkedIn. And then I go to Facebook and, and and there was nothing wrong with what she said because she was newly engaged and she Mm. was gushing about it. And it was so sweet and so cute, but everything was public. (coughs) So I could read it, even though we weren't friends, Mm -hmm. but then she's talking in her posts about moving away. Because she's getting married and she's going to move away. And I told her, I said, you understand that the HR people you are applying for jobs are reading this. So they they're can not even going to bring anything. you in for an interview. Yeah. 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 You know? <laughs> and, you know, and, and I told her, I said, first of all, change your privacy settings. You know, yeah. it's, it's very <laughs> sweet, but no, switch everything to, to private. And, yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, and you can put in your LinkedIn profile, willing to relocate. Because mm-hmm. that might also, you know, and, and so, it. but it was just kind of one of those things where it never occurred to her and it never occurs to a lot of people that those worlds overlap. You know, they mm-hmm. think, well, we can, we can do the funny dances on TikTok and nobody knows we can be very professional on LinkedIn and that's great. And we can be falling down drunk on some other platform, you know, but no, right. those platforms do overlap. Yeah. Well, and equally when you're looking to, uh, you know, maybe work for someone or work with Mm -hmm. someone as a partner, it's also good that you can look them up and get a little bit more Mm -hmm. information, especially in this day and age. I mean, you and I only met Mm -hmm. in person for the first time and Mm -hmm. we've known each other for a year. Mm -hmm. Right. But to really get to know people and understand a little Mm -hmm. bit more, you know, about Mm -hmm. their life, you do have these kind of slices that Mm -hmm. you can see about them Mm -hmm. to make sure before you kind of make commitments, Mm -hmm. you also know what you're getting into. Right. So. <laughs> right. You know, I've shared this before on the, the program. I taught for several years at Metro State University in Denver. And um, it was it, the, the Metro is, is one of those commuter colleges. So no dorms on campus. And we had students from 18 to, you know, over 65. It was great. I loved it. And I taught a communications class. And I had this one young woman who this is an eight o'clock class. She's 20 years old never missed a class, an eight o'clock class, right? She never missed a class really, and she's a yeah. youngster, you know? So that was just very impressive right there. But, um, and she kept telling me, look at my social media, look at my social media. Well, I preferred to not do that because I didn't want to see, you know, that, that they would say, you know, you know, blew off class today or, you know, and then they come in and tell me a totally different story. So, but she kept insisting, kept insisting. And, and so I looked her up. LinkedIn was good. Facebook was even pretty good. Um, Twitter was horrible. And I just, <laughs> you know, and, and it was like, oh my gosh. And so I called her up after class. And the problem was, first of all, that her Twitter name was her name. Uh, so anyone looking for her online yes. found her just right yep. like that. And then the other problem was, you know, I, I counted and she could not do a post without at least four uses of the F word. <laughs> That's and I rough. was like, hey, um, you know, and, and I told her, I, she, and, you know, and so she and I are discussing this and she said, well, but those are my friends and that's how we talk. And I said, but I'm a hiring manager and I don't want mm. you talking like that in my, in the, in the office. Right. Or more importantly, 
I'm someone who might be referring you to jobs and I don't want that reputation on me. Mm -hmm. So I told her, I said, you know, I'm not saying get off Twitter because you can have 500 Twitter accounts. I think you still can. I don't think Elon's done away with that. But um, and so I told her, I said, still have your one with your name, but now it's professional. Mm -hmm. So the the HR people are going to see it. They're going to go, oh, hey, you know, she's posting about school. She was a cheerleader. All of, you know, that was fine. And I said, but the one with your friends where you're going to use the language that's a little bit salty, have a name that nobody's going to find. Right. You know, and, and just do it that way. Salty sister, whatever she yes. wants to be. I know. I know. It was like, <laughs> yikes. But, um, you know, and, and the funny thing was she was amazed that I found her Twitter account. I said, honey, it's your name. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> At Betty Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was pretty easy to find you. Yeah. These days. And it's, it's just really rethinking a lot of these things, you know, about like what's important in life and, mm-hmm. and why are you using these things and, right. and what's getting out of it? And, mm-hmm. you know, people are trying to reconnect, but social media feels like sometimes it's, it's not actually that social. It's mm-hmm. not really connecting and, and right. coming together, which I think again, like us being in person and just being mm-hmm. able to sit down and, mm-hmm. and have a meal together and ask about how life is outside of, you know, the immediate here's, right. we got to get down to business mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And I think a lot of people have forgotten a lot of mm-hmm. those, those mannerisms before right. you'd run into somebody and go get coffee and, mm-hmm. you know, in the office. Now it's like, okay, I'm on zoom and, you mm-hmm. know, I'm trying to right. deal with my kid and my cat mm-hmm. and my coffee all the same time. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to not spill and oh my gosh. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I also encourage people to try to use these mediums to mm-hmm. actually connect with people. Right. And, you know, even for my LinkedIn, I said, absolutely mm-hmm. connect with me. If there's someone mm-hmm. in my network that can help you. Mm-hmm. Right. You got to start the mm-hmm. conversation mm-hmm. though. Um, so the more I'm out there now, hopefully mm-hmm. helping people then start to see kind of new ways mm-hmm. to use it. And I have pretty hard lines of like, if mm-hmm. I don't like the behavior, block. Right done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bye. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I don't need well, it. And, and it doesn't matter. I mean, like, you know, I have some friends, bless them. You know, they're, they're very much into animal rescue. Mm-hmm. I love that. Our cats are rescued cats. I mean, all of this stuff, but they post some incredibly graphic, ugly pictures. <laughs> nope. They're gone. Um, you know, just because, yeah. it, you know, and, and I know that they mean well, and, but yeah, I just, I'm, and especially, you know, like at, you know, eight in the morning or 11 o'clock at night. That's not what I want to see. It's a little bit much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we, we, we vaguely talked about it, but now let's really talk about it. So your new book is called Chameleon Mindset. Your company is named Chameleon. And then this book is named Chameleon. Don't chameleons just like want to blend and hide and not, you know, so tell us more about Chameleon. Yeah, you know, I really learned that chameleons got a bad rap. So Mm -hmm. a lot of times we act, they're sort of like the ostrich. And that's not actually true. So when I started building my business, and I was starting thinking about adapting to change and trying to find Mm -hmm. a logo that really matched that, Mm -hmm. I read this scientific study about chameleons that says nothing can actually be further than the truth. Mm -hmm. Chameleons are actually the perfect law of attraction. When a chameleon is green, they're Mm -hmm. in their zen, calm state where Okay. life is going well. Mm-hmm. When they're flashing colors, it mm-hmm. means they need something different. They need okay. food. They need to change the temperature mm-hmm. of their environment. Uh, they're trying to attract a mate mm-hmm. or detract a predator. Right. And so when they're changing colors, it's actually to stand out and mm-hmm. be like, here's what's wrong mm-hmm. for me right, right. now. Mm-hmm. And then they go back to being a chameleon. Mm-hmm. And I like this metaphor because at the end of the day, when we're trying to adapt to the things that are happening in our environment, mm-hmm. we want to come back to that Zen central mm-hmm. of ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're not changing our beliefs or our values mm-hmm. or any of those core bits. We're just trying to learn from our environment mm-hmm. and making sure we're getting the things mm-hmm. we need to have a happy and harmonious mm-hmm. life. Right. <laughs> you know, and And I I find that interesting. And you talk about it, obviously, in your book, because it is about, you know, getting noticed. You know, it's not about blending in, Um, you know, and 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 it's funny because in in many cases, chameleons are blending in. But I think that also goes to show that we need to do that, too. I mean, there are times where it is safest to blend into things, to, to not be the flashy whatever out there, but to know that you can if you need to. Yeah. And I talk about that and my podcast is called Stand Up and Stand Mm -hmm. Out for exactly that reason. Mm -hmm. It's talking about when is the time that this is so important. Mm -hmm. You 
to stand up for what you believe right. in. You need to be out there mm -hmm. and vocal and mm -hmm. making sure it's clear. Mm -hmm. And when is the time when maybe you need to listen, mm -hmm. be receptive, mm -hmm. try to understand mm -hmm and then try to be understood. Right. And so it's finding that balance. And there mm -hmm. are times where I, I haven't been safe. I, I have mm -hmm. been in very dangerous situations physically, mm -hmm. you know, psychologically, right. and I had to make those tough choices. Mm -hmm. And so going through that, I know how important it is to stand mm -hmm. up for what I believe in, right. but I also know it's important for me not to mm -hmm. trample on others so right. that they can be understood as well. Right. So. You know, and, and we obviously see that in a business environment where, you know, say you're in a, a team meeting and you might have the next greatest idea, you know, and, and, but the boss is there and the boss has the greatest idea. Okay. The smart thing might be to blend in for a little bit and then go up later and say, Hey, you know, I've thought of this, or, you know, you certainly don't want to tell the boss that's stupid. <laughs> Why are yeah. we doing this? You know, and, and, um, so it is about, and you call it creative adaptability, where you know what is appropriate for the situation that you're in. Yeah. And creative adaptability really uses three pieces. Mm -hmm. It's the cognitive piece, mm -hmm. the behavioral piece, mm -hmm. and the emotional piece. Mm -hmm. And you're using your previous experiences to figure out how to adapt mm -hmm. differently than right. maybe you did in the past. Mm -hmm. The original definition of this, funny if we were talking about the video games early, mm -hmm. is people that would take a book and they would adapt it to like a screenplay or mm -hmm. to a musical or theater or something. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of taking one mode mm -hmm. and making it similar, mm -hmm. but different. Right? right. And so that's exactly what we are beginning mm -hmm. to do with our lives, using those experiences, mm -hmm. making sure we're harnessing the positive parts mm -hmm. of our emotion and going forward and changing our cognitive and mm -hmm. behavior through the process. Right. You know, and it is about, you know, being in tune with what's going on. And, and of course that is, it's more difficult now that we're working remotely because we're not picking up on say somebody else's body language or worse, they turn their camera off and you're like, hello, are you even there? <laughs> you know? um, yeah. And, and so it is hard <clears throat> to know what is going on with someone else when we're working remotely. And have you discovered that it's, it is definitely more of a challenge or have we just gone, okay, we're adapting now and away we go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think this generation is definitely communicating differently mm -hmm. before, you know, we spent a lot of time very heavy on email and email mm -hmm. is a very asynchronous communication. Right. I'm mm -hmm. sending you something, I'm sending you an order. Mm -hmm. I expect you to do something. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to process and send right. it back. Now with instant message, Slack, you know, mm -hmm. all these other kind of ways of communicating, it's synchronous. It's mm -hmm. more like us having a mm -hmm. real conversation mm -hmm. where we're able to correspond. We can bring other people into yeah. the conversation if we need expertise. So I think some of those things are helping, but I do feel like there's still people really afraid of video and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want people to see me. I don't want people mm -hmm. to see where I live, whatever all the mm -hmm. things are. I'm introverted, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you know, we have, we are social creatures mm -hmm. and we identify by seeing yes. each mm -hmm. other. And if you don't see each other, really mm -hmm. see each other, what's going on? Like, mm, you look a little tired today. Are you feeling mm -hmm. okay? Right. Uh, you know, Hey, your mm -hmm. cat normally walks by, but I haven't seen him. Yeah. In a while. Everything okay with the cat. Mm -hmm. All those things that could be impacting their lives. Mm -hmm. You don't have that ability to mm -hmm. just put out that empathetic vibe right. to, to check in on mm -hmm. people. So I just really encourage people to turn the camera back on mm -hmm. And share a bit of yourself. Right. So that way people can also mm -hmm. be empathetic and, mm -hmm. and commiserate or help you or mm -hmm. and celebrate maybe something right. great is happening. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and for the people that are saying, well, you know, I'm, I, I'm in my spare bedroom or the kitchen table or whatever. Okay. As we've said, we've gotten used to that, but you can also make some changes. You know, you can have a screen behind you so that, you know, you're hiding the kitchen that is back there or, um, you know, things that think, you know, it's, it's, and, and we now know, you know, okay, where do you put your camera? I don't like looking <laughs> up at your nose. I don't like looking at the ceiling fan, you know, and, and I always want to tell people, you see what I'm seeing, right? And I, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it is, it, it's, to me, it's, it's, you know, you wouldn't walk into somebody's office and sit and be looking up at the ceiling, you know, <laughs> you might, but, um, you know, it's, so it's, it's just about using the, the, whatever you're using in a professional way. Well, and it's 
making sure you're really ready to work, mm -hmm. you know, and, right. and that's it. And it's difficult. Cause I know sometimes, you know, you maybe have a roommate or mm -hmm. you are, you know, sort of sharing mm -hmm. space with other people, but if that's really where we're going to be working mm -hmm. long-term, you need a workable space, right? N not just physically for a lot of these mm -hmm. video and, you know, interaction mm -hmm. things we're talking about mentally. I've worked mm -hmm. from home long before mm -hmm. the pandemic happened mm -hmm. and having a separation of church and state, right. so uh -huh. a separation mm -hmm. of my work environment mm -hmm. from my true home environment. Right. It was really important for mm -hmm. me to be able to separate that mm -hmm. time of day, mm -hmm. um, even if I had flexible hours and whatever was going on, but have one place to work right. and one place to enjoy the rest mm -hmm. of your life so that you keep that mm -hmm. kind of balance happening each day. So. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and the, it might be that you're at the kitchen table. You know, but it's you, if possible, you need to change that because you have files, you have all sorts of stuff and hello, people need the kitchen table. You know, do you really want your budget for next year to have cereal spilled on it? Um, now we can, we can do that at our desks also, but you know, it is about keeping it separate. And it's funny because I started home officing over 20 years ago when, you know, people were like, you're doing what? Um, and I remember one of the things that somebody told me was, <coughs> excuse me, you have to set those boundaries and, you know, with office hours, you know, and, and all those various things. And, and their point was when I took it seriously as a business, as opposed to, Hey, it's a hobby. And I'm responding to an email and sending a text, you know, while I'm watching a movie, when I took it serious as a business, other people would take it serious as a business also. Mm -hmm. it, it's so true. And we're going to continue to have these flex environments. I, I work mm -hmm. for global companies. So mm -hmm. stuff was running 24 mm seven, -hmm. always on, mm -hmm. even if it was a holiday in the U S right. it probably wasn't a holiday. Other right, places. Right. Yeah. They're like, and fourth of if July. I did, no, <laughs> exactly. It's and just if I did, the fourth of July, <laughs> it's just the fourth of July or it was Canada day already. And mm -hmm. you missed it. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> But, you know, I made it a point to still turn on the camera mm -hmm. if I had to take something urgent so that mm -hmm. you understand, yeah, hey, I'm actually at a barbecue. Mm -hmm. I'm in tank top and right. flip flops mm -hmm. and, and this is invading in my mm -hmm. private time. And this isn't going to be a long conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to solve mm -hmm. the crisis mm -hmm. and go back. Mm -hmm. So again, all of those visual cues that you understand differently over mm -hmm. video than just a text right. message or even, you mm -hmm. know, a phone call. So. Right. <laughs> you know, and. It is, it's, it's interesting. I did a, I was on, you know, webinar and it wasn't all that long ago. And it said, if you turn your camera off, we will dump you. Yep. And I thought, well, but you know, it's over lunchtime. I really don't want people sitting me, you know, seeing me eat lunch and yada, yada. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, all these things. And I even did that today. I mean, you know, I was, was on a, a thing with C-suite and I was eating my lunch. And so I turned my camera off, but I kept, I, you know, I, I take a couple bites and then I turn my camera back on and yeah, you know, still here, still here. Um, you know, and, and so, but people also knew, you know, that, that I was there and I was paying attention because I'd use the chat feature and, and all sorts of things. And, you know, and we've gotten used to, you know, seeing these things. I laugh, you know, so I have, you know, for, for those of you who are, are watching this, I have a t-shirt on, you know, <laughs> it says, I don't even know what it says, but you know, it's, it's certainly nothing that would be bad, but I have a collection of scarves and necklaces that are right here. And so boom, I can be Miss Professional, you know, just, just right away. Now, am I going to put shoes on? No, they don't need to see my feet, but I can, you know, I can put the scarf on and I can put a necklace on, toss a jacket on whatever. And all of a sudden I'm camera ready. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I've done some behind the scenes podcast ones where I show, I have like, you know, my cute little fuzzy uh -huh. slippers on my feet and uh -huh. stuff. Cause it's 10 degrees here. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And it's okay. It's finding that balance too. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, every day, no, I don't want to be full, you know, makeup mm -hmm. and hair and mm -hmm. camera ready. There's some days where I'm just like, I'm okay. You know, mm -hmm. I brush my teeth, mm -hmm. even though you yeah. can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I tell people, I love this way of networking because I don't like wearing shoes. You know? Yeah. And, and, and I really like sweats. You know? <laughs> um, uh, I have such a nice collection of shoes. I really miss those. actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and you know, back to what we were saying, you know, that we saw each other a couple of weeks ago at PodFest. I was really stressed out the week before. What am I going to wear? Because <laughs> I hadn't been doing things like that. And, and I think that's the other thing is, you know, we've, we have gotten used to this remote environment and we kind of freak out now when we have to go meet people in person. 
Yeah. Well, through my book, I have these karate kid style exercises where I help people get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And one of the exercises is actually a wardrobe exercise. And so, especially if you're trying to go through a transition, mm -hmm. maybe that's, you just want to get fit. Maybe it's a new job, mm -hmm. but that you spend the time actually getting one new outfit mm -hmm. and, you know, you could just be borrowing that from someone else. Mm -hmm. It just be, mm -hmm. can be new to you or upcycled. Right. So it's not something to break the bank, but really putting yourself in that position. Mm -hmm fully. If you right. want to go work out that you have comfortable workout clothes mm -hmm. that allow you to move, mm -hmm. that make you feel comfortable and confident mm -hmm. in your body. You have the right shoes on because mm -hmm. how many times have I done races and gotten blisters and then oh, yeah. walk for mm -hmm. a week after? So, you know, these exercises are super fun and ways for you to just kind of rethink your situation mm -hmm. and why these other little elements are important to mm -hmm. everything that you're doing to get comfortable and get the best mm -hmm. work and life out of your experience right. each day. Right. You know, and, and like you said, it's not something that breaks the bank, um, right. you know, and, and I, you know, I've, I've worked with people before and especially, you know, younger folks who have, you know, I've, I've said, you need to have an appropriate interview outfit. And they look at me and they say, I can't afford it. And I say, okay, I'm not talking about a three or $400 suit. What right. I'm talking about is you go to TJ Maxx or you go to Goodwill, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you, as long as it's clean and fits well, that's, those are my, my criteria, no holes. I mean, you know, things like that, but you know, you can, you can get some very nice attire just doing something like that. Um, you know, and, and I tell people, so there's no excuse to say, yeah. you know, Hey, I, I can't do it because you can do, you know, and, and now of course the key is you don't walk in and say, Hey, this is my goodwill outfit. I mean, you know. <laughs> Unless you're trying to get a job with goodwill and then maybe right. do. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, and, and, but it's, it is all about, you know, and, and I know you talk about this in the book, how you're presenting yourself, you know, and, and that is that chameleon, you know, what, what are you putting on for that situation? Yeah. Well, and I talk about, I mean, when I was little, we really didn't have money and I was always mm -hmm. much, much smaller than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so I got tons of hand-me-downs from right. everybody else. And so I had a very eclectic style and at mm -hmm. school I had to wear uniforms. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was sort of on the weekends or, mm -hmm. you know, when we had play dates and stuff where I could wear things, mm -hmm. but I still did that. Even as I got mm -hmm. older, I still had this mentality, like, it's okay. Like if mm -hmm. someone else, you know, is kind of cleaning out their closet, mm -hmm. I'm the first one to raise right. my hand. Oh yeah. And if it's not for me, I know someone mm -hmm. it is good for. And mm -hmm. there's great places like Plato's Closet and some mm -hmm. of these other places where they also do buy and mm -hmm. sell clothes. Mm -hmm. So you could even sell some of the things you don't right. like anymore mm -hmm. and get something else in exchange. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of really great ways of, of exchanging. And mm -hmm. you can go on TikTok and watch people mm -hmm. sew things and learn how to sew. Just sew. <laughs> you do. All those things. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> so we talked about the chameleon. In your book, you also talk about the zebra. So what's up yeah. with the zebra? <laughs> Uh, well, the zebra is the other side of the coin. So the zebra represents the fixed mindset, which okay. is kind of the way that many of us have been working for some time. Mm -hmm. I'm the boss. You're the employee. Black I know everything. and white. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That everything has a very clear way and linear path of what's mm -hmm. happening. But especially with the way work is now, it rarely is the case. Mm -hmm. Now we have matrix teams and you have multiple right. managers and it's very confusing and maybe mm -hmm. even across geography lines. Mm -hmm. And so not being the zebra is really important. I also use the zebra as a reference for how people are using social media, mm. that they're out there saying, oh, I'm so authentic. And this is my amazing <laughs> lifestyle and mm -hmm. life when behind the scenes, they're definitely broke and this is right. all fake and manufactured. Mm -hmm. And so it's really making sure that your outside and inside are mm -hmm. always matching, that what mm -hmm. you're doing is true to your nature and your values. Mm -hmm. And you don't end up on that spectrum where mm -hmm. you are acting like you know it all when you have a lot of gaps mm -hmm. and, and flaws behind the scenes. Right. And let's be honest, we all have gaps. We all have flaws, you know, and, and, but that's where it comes, we're going to segue right back to the beginning. That's <laughs> where we're always learning. You know, we're mm -hmm. filling in those gaps. We're, you know, and, and maybe we decided, oh, I didn't want to learn that after all, but you know, that is where we're really going to benefit the most is when we are continually learning and continually bettering ourselves. Yeah. And, and I've taught my team this for a very long time. It's 
be humble and always be learning. There is always something mm -hmm. to better understand. Even as a manager, even as a senior manager, a long time in your career, there are new things happening. Things are evolving faster than all of us can learn. Mm -hmm. And so it's only when we start sharing that information, mm -hmm. collaborating better together, that we'll all get smarter and be mm -hmm. able to produce more in right. whatever our business or career might be. Right. <laughs> And in, in fun stuff too, like playing video games, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> well, oh my gosh, Nikki, we ha we've we only got about five minutes left. And you know what this, this is just so much fun. And, and we just need to, to do this more often than once a year, um, you know, <clears throat> because you have such great wisdom to share. But for those who are looking and, and want, you know, want to, to reach out to you, tell us how they can find you. Yeah, the best way to reach me is through my personal site, the Nikki Green 360com It's kind of the one site to rule them all. There you can check out my book, my podcast. Mm -hmm. You can check out my social media if you want to mm -hmm. see me dance on TikTok or check out my LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. to be my friend there. Uh, lots of options and always new stuff coming up. We'll have a new online course coming with the Chameleon Mindset book mm -hmm. and a absolutely free uh, LinkedIn community where mm -hmm. you can join to continue building your network. Mm -hmm. I love it. Give us that, that URL again. The Nikki Green 360com Perfect. I love it. I love it. You know, and you you do so many things with people. And as we said, you know, you 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 your focus now is on working with the young professionals. And I just love that. I think that is is such a great way to be giving back. Yeah, for me, giving back has always been important. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from the six parents that raised me, I had teachers took me to school. Mm -hmm. I had coaches that gave me more guidance. There were people along the way that always helped me to make sure I got on this path that I am on now. And so I want to make sure that I'm continuing to help that next generation to find their path and you know continue to build my network mm -hmm. along with theirs. I love it. And that website is the Nikki green.com. So it's pretty easy to find. Um, yep. So I love it. Well, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? I'm here to help you on your journey. And for me, that doesn't stop, you know, when the clock shuts down, it's go ahead and reach out whenever mode works for you, go through my LinkedIn, if I can help someone, you know, through my network, help yours or social media, if you just need some entertainment, I am here to help. And I really just think the more we connect with each other on a real basis, tell me your story. I'll tell you a bit of mine and we can get to know each other. I love it. So much fun. Well, you know, like I said, I've been having so much fun talking with the Nikki Green. I'm Deb Creer. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.